At the beginning of Parshat Vaera, Moses spoke to the Israelites of the promises God had made to their ancestors, of the Holy Land and their destiny to go there. But the children of Israel would not listen to him at first. After 400 years of slavery, they were skeptical. It seemed, from their perspective, like God had completely forgotten about them. And that is where the plagues really begin. You might think that the plagues were all about punishing the Egyptians, or proving God's might to Pharaoh. And they were. But they were also a powerful way for God to come alive again in the lives of the Israelite slaves. Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh with a simple basic message. You've heard it before. Let my people go. Now Pharaoh wasn't used to people telling him what to do. And of all the many gods in Egypt, he had never heard of the God of Moses, so he demanded a sign. Aaron cast down his staff, and it turned into a snake. But Pharaoh's magicians were able to do the same thing with their magic. Even when Aaron's snake ate the others and turned back into a staff, the Pharaoh was still not convinced. His heart hardened, and he would not let the Israelites go. So God told Moses and Aaron to stretch out the staff over the waters of the Nile and say, By this shall you know that I am the Lord. See, I strike the waters in the Nile, and they will be turned to blood. The fish will die, and the water will stink, so that none may drink for seven days. And so the waters turned to blood, even water in bowls and cups, and Egypt suffered. After seven days had passed, Pharaoh would still not let them go, so God told Aaron to stretch out his arm again over the water and bring up frogs onto the land. And they came up onto the land so that every surface swarmed with their squishy, warty bodies. Pharaoh couldn't take it, and he promised to let the people go. So God caused the frogs to die. The Egyptians swept them up into enormous piles till the land stank, but there was relief. And with the relief, Pharaoh's heart hardened again, and he took back his promise. And so God sent more plagues, one after another. And each time when it got really bad, Pharaoh would promise again to let the people go. And each time the plague ended, his heart would harden, and the promise would evaporate. So it went with blood and frogs, and on and on for ten plagues, lice, insects, pestilence, boils, hail which turned to fire when it struck the land, and three more terrible plagues which we'll hear about in next week's Parsha. With every plague, the children of Israel watched as their God fought on their behalf for their freedom. With every new wonder, they were more and more sure that a terrible and awesome power existed beyond themselves. They began to remember who they were, to have hope that Pharaoh could be defeated and to imagine that their lives might serve some purpose beyond slavery. And yet when we, the descendants of these very slaves, remember the plagues each year at our Passover Seder tables, we still do not celebrate the plagues themselves with joy. They may have been the key to our escape from slavery, and the agent for our reawakening to God in the world, but they caused tremendous suffering. And so, when we name the plagues each year, we remove a drop from our glasses for each one, a reminder that we should never rejoice in suffering, even the suffering of our enemies.